Hey strong people, Kale Beck here and we're gonna recap the amazing contest that was put on this weekend. Strongest woman in the world. So how strongest woman in the world works is it's everyone who has gotten a strongman corporation pro card is eligible to compete. That's how I understand it. And uh, they're competing over three weight classes, lightweight, which is uh, like what 63 kilos, 140 pounds, middleweight under 180 pounds and you know, that's what, 81, 82 kilos, and open, heavyweight, however you want to put it. The top two in each division qualify for the Arnold Pro, which has the biggest payout in strong women that I am aware of. Uh, the contest was put on in Norway by uh, uh, the, the Burl Johnsons and Strongman Corporation, and uh, it was fantastic. Uh, a lot of other contests have been put on here in the past, like uh, Strongest, World Strongest Viking, a bunch of SCL contests, etc. And it's just a very, the, what, FIFOR hotel? I think I said that right. Um, but definitely put it on my bucket list as somewhere that I need to experience a contest at because it just looks cool. The environment looks cool. I mean, the setting looks amazing. So with that, I think this was as far as all the pro strong women shows I've seen since they popped up in the last like three, four years, it started to become a thing um, and just grown. This is the one that seems the most reminiscent of like a pro show where it's at an exotic location with, you know, larger than life events and, uh, you know, it's not mixed in with the whole, you know, with also the men, with also this amateur class, you know, in the corner of an expo or something, which is fine too, but this is the one where it's like, like when I was like, when I, when someone thinks of strong man, they think of watching old world strongest mans in some, you know, some cool environment with really cool events. And this is exactly what that was. And that's how pro strong men and women should be. So yeah, the top two qualify for their own pro. Um, and something that's interesting with this is that I think three out of the five events, the all, all the weight classes did the same weight. So you could kind of mix them up uh, and see in it's in like, you know, some middleweights might've won or placed higher, you know, top three overall, you know, even some lightweights would place top three overall in uh, some of the events, which, which is interesting. So the her and those events would be the Hercules hold, the truck pull, and I think the power stairs. So only the yoke, stones, and Viking press. Uh, they they use different weights. In uh, the Hercules hold, in the lightweights, let's go here. In the lightweights, uh, Laura Anderson just absolutely demolished it. That is not surprising at all. Um, and uh, with, what, 44-ish, 45 seconds, uh, Brittany Diamond won the middleweights. And uh, I think Brooke Sousa, no wait, uh, Julie Rader uh, won the heavyweights with 35. And Brittany Diamond had the highest, uh, the best time of all of them. And the truck pull, the only lightweight to finish was uh, Jessica Thieker of, uh, of Canada. Um, everyone else got distance or struggled a little bit with that. It was a heavy truck. It looked like, like ridiculously heavy. And also on the, on the Hercules hold, they're saying that's the same setup that they use for the men. And I've seen a lot of guys not get 45 seconds on that event, watching some of, some of them in the past. Um, and the truck. Yeah. And then who Ashley Crawford ends up winning, uh, the truck for the middleweights and Brooke Sousa won it for the heavyweights. Um, and yeah, it's, and Ashley Crawford and uh, Latha Ingalls got one and two in that event and within like a second of each other and they trained together uh, down at East Coast, West Coast in uh, you know Southern California, which I'm gonna get to more on there. On the yoke, it started to separate a little bit. You could see like this is where, this is the event um, even though the heavyweights are doing a heavy, like, you know, a much heavier weight, I think it was like 570 and then it was like 510 for the middleweight. So it's a good jump. 
but it was this giant big log and you know it's on your back and it's awkward and the heavyweights you see their times range from 9.85 with Brooke Suso winning um, to 17 uh, being the slowest time and the winning time in the middleweights was by Rebecca Roberts at 15 seconds so you know they had like those kind of events that you know that's where you, you start to see the people with a little bit higher uh, a little bit bigger people um kind of dominating the the fastest time for uh, the lightweights was uh uh farah fonseca fonseca yeah farah fonseca got 1192 with the with the yoke winning that event and some i think the next closest was in the 13s um maybe Jessica Kite looks like. Uh, the stones were interesting stones. There, these, there's an eight stone series in 60 seconds, which I don't think anyone ended up finishing, but they're mixed in with uh, also granite stones. I used uh, granite stones where they're just basically carved out. They're not a mold uh, where they're poured with concrete. So they're super dense. It's just a whole different feel. When I went to China and I competed years ago, I used those and I was like really thrown off. And you, sometimes when you do international contests, you don't, it can say, oh, you're gonna be doing a stone series. And it's never really elaborated on, on what kind of stones they are. So I remember I showed up, I'm like, oh, the stones range from this to this. That'll be easy. And they're like, oh yeah, you're using these granite stones and uh, you're not allowed to use tacky. And uh, so that made it way harder. And I definitely struggled. Uh, but in the lightweights, uh, Farrah Fonseca again won that event with the only one to load seven stones. And uh, Leifa Ingalls had the fastest time in the middleweights and started to make a little comeback after, a, you know, after uh, losing some points in the Hercules hold. And her, Ashley Crawford and Brittany Diamond, who end up being the top three in that order, were the only... Uh, athletes to load all seven. Uh, Olga in the heavyweights was the only one to load all seven in uh, for uh, in the stones, and that was you know and they're doing um they did one event day one was just the Hercules hold day two was those was the truck pull yoke and stones and then day three was Viking press and power stairs uh, in. Uh, on the lightweights, I'm pretty sure if I remember right, yeah, and it shows that uh, Farah had a pretty commanding lead. Um, after, you know, she was up by like what two points after day two. Um, Brittany Diamond was up by three points over Leifa um, in the middleweights after day two, and Brooke Sousa was in first place in the heavyweights. Uh, going into the Viking press. I think the weight for the heavyweights was around 220, 230, uh, middleweights 200 ish, and um, lightweights maybe you know a little less than that. Um, let's see. Leslie Hoffins won the Viking Press with the 11 reps, followed by Christine. Let's see. Sorry. Sorry, it's hard to see Christina Bangman making a, a bit of a comeback at the end with seven reps. Uh, Farah stayed right in it with six reps, and then she she really picked up a lot of points on everyone that was right behind her after that. So then, so she jumped to going into the last event a commanding six and a half point lead in the in the middleweights. Uh, Leifa Engels hit 14 reps. She is just a pressing machine, followed by 11 reps by, I think it's Sumer Johnson. Uh, it's hard to hear. And then, so Leifa picks up from four and a half points on Brittany in that pressing event. And uh, a little bit of help by a teammate, Ashley Crawford, who tied with Brittany, splitting those points. So they split points. So she got, so Leifa got nine points and uh, Brittany and uh, Ashley. Uh, got five and a half a piece. So, and then in the heavyweights, uh, Jessica Fithin uh, absolutely crushed it in 14 reps, uh, which tied with uh, Olga um, for 14 for first place. On the powers, and then, you know, then the power stairs, 
I don't think any lightweights finished it, but Jessica Thieker picked up big, big points. I believe she got first in that event and she ends up in um, second overall. So Farrell won from the UK. Congratulations. Uh, Jessica Thieker got second. Laura Anderson third. Jessica Kite fourth. Christina Bangla, um, Leslie Hoffins, and Rachel Pyron is how it ends up. And then in the middleweights, uh, Leifa Ingalls won, uh, loading all of the steps, uh, her and her teammate Ashley Crawford, who did it, She's really came on after winning uh, Strongman Corporation Nationals and placing, I believe, fourth at World's Strongest Woman. Now she placed second at Strongest Woman in the World. Uh, they were the only two to finish, it looks like, uh, the Power Stairs, and that wrapped up second place for Ashley and uh, Leifa won. Uh, definitely, she, she's a great competitor, knows how to be clutch, and just, uh, you know, it, you don't always have to be leading everything from the start to win. She just kept plugging away, doing her game, and it was very impressive performance. Uh, Brittany Diamond ends up in third. That's, uh, you know, she she got third at uh, World's Strongest Woman as well, so she's always right up there on the podium, followed by... Sumer Johnson gained fourth, which is a great performance for her. Haven't heard much from her lately, so she's right back in the mix and middleweight pro strong woman. Followed by Allison Lockhart, uh, Sarah Cogswell, Rebecca Roberts, Bailey Duchesne, and Kimberly Lawrence, who of course is uh, coming off a, I believe, ACL injury. In on the power stairs, uh, Olga and Jessica Finton were the only two to finish to. To finish with Olga getting the faster time of 30.72 seconds, which I believe is the fastest time out of everyone. She just looked like a, a technician on it. It looked like she had more practice doing power stairs than anyone. It's just super efficient, great technique. Uh, Jessica did uh, really well, you know, uh, coaching her. That was an event that uh, was a little worried starting off, um, but you know, made huge improvements in it. Ended up getting second in that event um, and just missed out on uh, third place just by a point. Ended up in fourth. But, you know, she, the, she made a couple uh, a couple attempts at the last stair and really made sure to uh, to finish it out, to finish it, you know, to and finally got it. So she dug deep, which is a good sign of uh, growing as a competitor, and it was, it was a great contest. So uh, Brooke... Brooke Souza ends up winning uh, Strongest Woman in the World, uh, followed by Olga, then Julie Rader, Jessica Fitton, and uh, Jackie Bundes. So the athletes that qualify uh, out of this contest for the Arnold Pro would be uh, Brooke Souza and Olga, Leitha Engels and Ashley Crawford, uh, Farah Fonseca and Jessica Thieker will all be uh, competing at the Arnold. They, I'm going to different photo now to show everyone who's qualified. They will be joined by Donna Moore for winning the contest last year. Uh, Jessica Fithin for winning the Arnold Amateur has already qualified. Um, Sun Nee of Germany is qualified for winning in the middleweight. Kia, Wo Kia Woodland uh, qualified at the Arnold for winning the lightweights there. In Arnold South Africa, Rochelle Renke uh, qualified through the middleweight and you know all the athletes I just uh, disclosed have also qualified and the heavyweight winner of the Arnold Europe Arnold Spain will also be qualifying um, some thoughts on the contest over of uh, just watching this in pro strongman in, in general uh, there's amazing athletes at the top but since it is so new there's not too much depth I mean you get nine athletes in middleweight I believe it was about what seven in lightweight and you know just five athletes in heavyweight the, the when there's only five athletes usually like you go like most any like pro show has 10 athletes it's a good number even 15 i think is fine when you have five it is so hard to make points back up there's just not that many available once you get you know so if you've are if someone has a decent lead halfway through uh, or just with one or two events left, there's not going to be much of a swing. There's only, uh, it can only move five points anyway. So 
since they did something I'm, I'm thinking of, and, and they're all going to compete as an open weight class uh, anyways when they go to the Arnold Pro, is I think like uh, the middleweights and the heavyweights should, should kind of be combined at these bigger pro shows. It's been done before. It's been done with the men. And then you do, uh, you kind of, you know, they all do the same weight, so should, they should be doing, you know, the heavyweight weights or maybe just, just, just something in between. So, like, let's say if it was a 570 and a 510 yoke, then maybe it's 550. You know, if it was a 200 and 230 um, Viking, just make it 220. You know, the Stone Series, I think, is fine uh, at either weight, but... They should then there would have been um, fourteen competitors, and there'd be a big swing, and it'd be interesting to see how they how everyone goes, and that's how it's going to be at the Arnold, anyways. Like I said, and you know, in a middleweight has won the Arnold, anyways. Lefo won it the first year, so this isn't unheard of. I think it would make it uh, more interesting. You can give a, and then you can just you can add them up separately, like is it nationals, anyways, and uh, have multiple you know and then just have the category winners as well um you know and then just have an overall who gets you know the title of strongest woman in the world right so that's some thoughts let me know what you think about kind of combining the classes but you can still keep them separate a little bit